Our trip begins and ends at the Wolseley Bay Lodge. This was convenient for us because we could pay to leave our car here and we could also obtain our provincial park permits at the lodge. This would be required for our first night on the river. From here, we would head out on a large circle loop, paddling east out of Wolseley Bay. Then we pick up the narrow and scenic Little French River. Continuing out the main channel of the French River, we reach the open waters of Lake Nipissing, then head west and follow the island-studded shoreline. At the far end of Lake Nipissing, we enter Warren Bay, then make our way south into Shanty Bay, where a series of unknown portages should bring us back to the Wolsey River and the eastward paddle back to the parked car for a total paddling distance of about 110 kilometers. Departing from the lodge at Wolseley Bay, we paddled east along the French River. The early spring weather was perfect. And the only obstacle that day was a short portage around the imposing Five Finger Rapids. Our first evening, we camped out in a quiet cove on the French River Delta. This time of year, the river is a quiet, peaceful place. The only sounds heard that night were the haunting cries from the loons. So we're on the Little French River, and we're making our way up to Lake Nipissing. And uh, yesterday we came about 30 kilometers from Wolsey Bay, making our way upstream through uh, some swifts and rapids and stuff. But today could be a bit challenging, even though it's calm right now. We're going to go out towards uh, Lake Nipissing, and that's a really, really, really big lake. And at times it can get quite choppy, windy, wavy, you name it. But uh, the weather forecast today is looking pretty favorable. And uh, as it's early morning now, hopefully we can get a good, good start to the day and put some kilometers behind us. We'll see how it goes. If the lake's too choppy, we'll turn around and uh, come up with a different route strategy. So we got the maps, we got the time, and let's go for an adventure. way through the maze of islands on the French River Delta, we were blessed with pristine weather conditions. Brilliant blue skies above and mirror smooth waters below made for an effortless paddle. Eventually, we made our way out into Lake Nipissing, where we assumed the conditions would be less favorable. but we were pleasantly surprised to find just a light chop on this large open body of water. For this particular trip, we chose to bring along our lightweight carbon fiber bent shaft paddles, and we were able to make rapid progress in our sleek, 17-foot-long Novacraft canoe. In fact, we would set a personal record that day, covering a distance of more than 42 kilometers.
we passed numerous uninhabited islands along Lake Nipissing's south shore. The rocky granite outcrops and windswept pines of these islands were reminiscent of those found further west, out in the waters of Georgian Bay. Eventually, we found ourselves a secluded island of our own and set up camp for the night. That evening, as we sat around the fire, we watched as the golden sun dipped below the western horizon. Then marveled at the starlit sky that unfolded above us. The perfect end to a perfect day. We've had really great weather as we've been uh, paddling up the upper French River and across the southern shore of Lake Nipissing the last two days. It's the first week in May. Uh, both days so far have been sunny and warm uh, and there's no bugs this time of year which is a real bonus. We woke this morning to a gorgeous photogenic sunrise out over the lake. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we checked the weather forecast and it looks like we are going to encounter some rain later on today. So, y you know, y you can't get everything. You got to take the good with the bad. As we headed out that morning, the clouds rolled in and the temperature began to drop. At Warren Bay, we stopped for a late morning snack before beginning our southward trek in search of a series of portages that would eventually lead us back to the Wolseley River. As we made our way down towards Shanty Bay, the rains began and continued for the rest of the afternoon. But we're doing good. <laughs> uh, we've been looking for an old portage for about two and a half hours and it's such a terrible day. It's about 10 degrees, it's raining really, really heavily. We're soaked to the core and there's no portage trail. So we're bushwhacking till we find a road and then we've uh, got to bushwhack down a little bit of an embankment in a valley and yeah, it's kind of hell out here. <laughs> uh, so the route was good up to this point. Other than that, it's a great route, but uh, yeah, it's kind of lost from here on in. It doesn't help that it's rainy and cold. Uh, on the plus side, there's no bugs, but it's pretty chilly out here today. So we gotta keep moving to stay warm. Using satellite maps and a GPS, we eventually made our way through the bush, down a cottage road, then through some more bush until finally arriving at the shore of a small unnamed lake. Here we would make camp for the night.
The first order of business, however, was to build ourselves a fire and warm our wet, cold bodies. As the evening approached, the rain let up and the sky began to clear and we were serenaded by a constant din from the creatures of the night. On our last day, we awoke to a chilly morning with overcast skies, but lucky for us, it was not raining. We warmed ourselves by the fire and fueled our bodies with hot oatmeal and coffee. Yesterday we paddled Lake Nipissing down through the west arm, uh, and then we tried to look for about a 525 meter portage to these little un unnamed lakes uh, just above the Wolseley River but uh, couldn't find any portages whatsoever. Found a series of uh, logging roads, maybe some ATV trails, skitter tracks that kind of uses a portage, but a bit of bushwhacking on the end of it. So it's a viable route, a little challenging. Uh, it just needs a bit of a clear on each end and it's pretty good to walk on. But we don't know what's gonna happen today because we still have a 220 meter portage to go before we get down to the Wolsey system proper. And um, yeah, it's around maybe a boggy area, maybe a waterfall. I'm not really quite sure to what to see on the satellite maps. Uh, we don't know if the trail's going to be there whatsoever because if this trail wasn't here, why would that trail be there? <laughs> but there was evidence that uh, people had camped at this site that we just sort of set up shelter for last night in the wind and the rain. Not a bad site, nice uh, flat spot for the tent. Um, but we woke up this morning, gray skies, and it was snowing a bit, but the sun's out now, so, you know, hopefully the sun stays with us for the rest of the day and we'll see how it goes. A bit more of a lost canoe route adventure ahead of us. And so we headed out through a series of small lakes in search of a lost portage. No trail. No. But it looks like someone camped there years and years ago. It's kind of a nice spot. Actually would have been nicer than last night. Would have got the sunset. Well, keep searching. Eventually, we found what looked to be a suitable trail and began hauling our gear overland. It's always an easier task trying to find these lost trails during the springtime before all the undergrowth has grown up, covering all signs of a pathway. It's our end of portage. Uh feast last day so we can use up all the good stuff. We didn't really eat lunch yesterday because of the rain and the cold. We just had an energy bar and some hammer perpeptum for power and uh, push through the portage. And yeah, now we get a feast on the remaining food. What have we got there? Bacon, ham, wraps, smoked cheddar, lettuce, onion, all the good stuff. And the weather's taking a turn for good too. We're on Bear Lake. Which is uh, right before we start going down the Wolsey River. So hopefully all the portages are out of the way already. It's all the ones that are indicated on the old m &R map of the journey. So we'll see. Apparently there's sections in the Wolsey where you have to line and wade and who knows what. But uh, we're kind of prepared for that as long as the weather holds out. It was calling for a bit of snow today, but it feels like 15 degrees out right now. So I'm wearing shorts, you're wearing shorts. It's gorgeous weather, it feels more like May as 
opposed to December like it was feeling earlier, November like yesterday. So it looks to be good. We'll see what uh, the rest of the day brings. After a relaxing lunch break, we paddled to the far end of Bear Lake, and here we picked up the Wolseley River. There were a few narrow, overgrown sections, but overall, the Wolsey River was kind to us. We seemed to have plenty of water under our keel, no doubt due to all the spring runoff in the area. In fact, the 10-kilometer paddle back to our car at Wolsey Lodge was in fact portage-free, making for a perfect end to a perfect canoe trip.